Um, let's jump right into social analytics and, and get started on the, the new ways that you can leverage this tool and, and what it means to you, really. And and when we talk about social, I think it's important to, um, you know, you might think of LinkedIn and Facebook and, and uh, Pinterest is very hot right now, YouTube, etc. But really, social media is um, anywhere that people are out online talking about your content, any kind of links that are coming in, any kind of engagement with your brand. So it's really not just uh, the social networks, so to speak. Um, really, the broader definition could be you know any kind of blogging, any kind of discussion of your site, your brand, etc. And and at this point, most companies have realized that they need to have some kind of engagement strategy in Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever channel is right for you. Um, but there's still a lot of questions about what does this really mean and is this investment of time and resources and energy um, really worth it? And does it make sense to do this? We know our customers there, but what are we getting back from all this effort? And really, um, there's been a couple of tools that have been out there that kind of help you understand how influential you are on, on Twitter or um, kind of, you know, how your social media is going or different kind of listening um, listening tools out there from a social perspective. Um, but, you know, from our perspective, there really hasn't been something that, that bridged the impact you see on your site and then also kind of what's happening online. And this is really what we're talking about when we talk about um, social analytics, the new social analytics reporting in Google Analytics. So there are some prerequisites to really get the most information from this. And um, <laughs> of course, there's always some work to be done. And, and the first of which for, for really both of these tools today, the social analytics and the content experiments, is you have to have goals. And, and these are goals for your website, really. And if you, you don't have any goals set up in Google Analytics today, you're probably going to want to pause this presentation um, in a few minutes and, and really think about that and think about um, you know, some key features such as, you know, why do we have a website? Why does this website really exist? What is its function? What do we want people to do when we, they come to the site? Do you want them to look at important pages, um, fill out a contact request form, buy something for an e-commerce site, download a white paper, uh, look at 30 pages. Um, perhaps if you're if you're serving up ads, you'd like them to look at a lot of the pages. What is it that you want people to do um, on the website? And then when we get into you know that's very important for goals in general, but also we need to understand um, those conversion paths as well to to get the most from both of these tools. And and when we start to think about what we want people to do on the website, you know what metrics really indicate success. You know, how, what what can I point to in Google Analytics? What numbers, what dimensions, what kind of information is there that says, yes, 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 people have done this. They've they've requested a form or they've looked at my video. Um, they've bought something. I, I know that they've done it. And, and it's very important to kind of package that together because that really gets into the next step um, to really go in there and set up your goals and to understand, you know, which activities on their site are important. And I know that, you know, this is intended to be a, an update webinar on um, social analytics and also content experiments, but they don't work without the goal. So I am going to spend a few minutes on it. And it's so important. And any opportunity I really have to talk about goals in analytics, I'm going to take it. <laughs> um, the next question you really want to talk about, really, is, and, and ask yourself is, you know, these, these things that we want people to do on, on the site, do they vary by different customer segments, for example? So if, um, if my website is a bank and I have people that come in log in or people that are already bank customers, how do they use the site differently than somebody that's looking to see what the interest rate is on my checking account? Um, because more than likely, the way that, that your different customer segments will use the site um, is very different. You know, for example, um, if you provide customer service on your website, your metrics uh, and goals might be very different 
um, depending on the customer type. For for a new prospect that comes to the site, you want them to look at a lot of content, look at pages, interact with videos and things like that. For somebody that's coming into the customer report section, you want them to find the information as quickly as possible. So, um, you know, a goal for somebody on the customer support section of the website or that type of customer segment might be to look at only two pages and find what they're looking for. Um, so think about that and how it might apply to your business. And then, of course, you know, create those goals to measure everything in Google Analytics. And, you know, if that's something that you, um, you need help with, we've got a lot of resources on the site. Or, of course, we, um, you know, as certified partners are always available to engage with you and help you leverage and get everything you can from the tool. So another prerequisite to, to fully understand the uh, everything that you can get from um, social analytics and to make the most of it is really um, the track social method. And the track social method is a, just a little piece of JavaScript that tells Google um, some extra information when somebody clicks on a social media icon for your site example. So if you have um, icons for Google+, Facebook, etc. in your footer or um, on every page of your site, for example, you want to make sure that, that when somebody clicks on those and goes to view your Facebook page or, or like you on Facebook and things like that, that they are, um, that Google Analytics understands what that click is, that it, it was a social click to go kind of interact with your page. And and this this is, is something that, you know, there's been other iterations of it in the past. You could use event tracking, etc. Or you may be using event tracking today to understand if someone's looking at your Facebook um, profile, etc. And and the the one thing about this track social method, though, is that you really should use the. Um, you really need to use async coding. You have to have the async version of the Google Analytics tracking code on your site. And if for whatever reason, if you're still using Urchin or the first um, version of the GA.js um, or whatever you have on the site, and if you're not using async, I highly recommend that you upgrade to the async coding. Um, this is something that is if your analytics admin can go in there and pull the code out of the out of the Google Analytics interface themselves um, and you can you can get up to speed and, and really harness all of the data and the potential that's available in analytics. Um, there's a couple of reasons right off the bat why you'd want to. It works a lot better. It works faster. And as the name might imply, async, it works asynchronously in the browser so that it will capture things much quicker and doesn't hold up anything from loading on the page. Um, so do upgrade to the async coding to, to get the most from, from this method uh, and use the track social method to, to really understand how people are interacting, which content you're inter they're interacting with on your website. Um, that said, if you're using Add This or Share This, they have pretty good in integration into Google Analytics, um, then you wouldn't necessarily need to duplicate it with the track social method. There are um, also a couple of more sophisticated API um, integrations that you can do for um, Facebook and Twitter that kind of, um, you know, for example, if somebody likes or unlikes you, um, you know, from your page when that activity has happened after they've logged into their Facebook account and done it and come back to your site, it actually will track that in analytics for you. Um, those are a little more sophisticated, and um, but I just want you to know that they do exist. It's kind of out of the scope of, of, of this quick webinar, but just know that they're there and there's some resources available for you to, to do that as well.